Let's now turn to the Finance Minister herself, Deputy Prime Minister Krista Freeland, who joins us right now. Minister, thank you for being here. Great to be with you, Michael. Listen, most of the uh, pre-budget announcements were focused on housing, but only about a billion dollars, uh, a billion dollars rather, will roll out over this fiscal year. Are you making promises you know you might not be able to keep? Not at all. Um, you're right. You know, I would say the pre-budget announcements were focused on three areas. Housing, very much a key priority. Affordability, really, really important. And investments in the economic capacity of Canada, like our investment in AI. And we we said we were going to do all of this in a way that was fair and that we were going to focus on supporting young Canadians, especially millennials and Gen Z. So that was our focus. And it was going to be said, we're going to do this built on a fiscally responsible foundation. That was really not just the message, but the content of the pre-budget announcements. When it comes to housing, there's a lot of money there. The key thing, though, with housing is really to change the rules of the game. At the end of the day, yes, the federal government has to be there. We have to be there making investments in housing and also in the infrastructure that you need if you're going to build more homes. But the biggest single thing that's been missing in Canada is we've had too much red tape. We have had too many onerous zoning restrictions. And what we have been doing has really, uh, really encouraged me. I think that over the past six months, we have seen a revolution in how Canadians approach housing, how provinces approach housing, how municipalities approach housing, how people think about housing. And I think we've really understood as a country, if we want to be a growing country, and we do, if we want our kids to be able to afford to rent or buy a home of their own, we need to get more homes built faster to do that. We need more gentle density. We need less red tape. We need fewer zoning restrictions. Our housing plan is accomplishing that. The Housing Accelerator Fund has been such an important way of doing that. And our investments in infrastructure are going to continue accomplishing that. But let me let me jump in there then. So, so is it enough to accomplish a, a process to get rid of the red tape, to, to make things faster when you have probably about a year left in, in your mandate when the money is back-ended? Is that enough? Well, it's not just a process. Like the red tape is being snipped and clipped all across the country. We are really seeing an embrace of gentle density across the country. We are seeing municipalities across the country saying, we know we need to get more homes built faster. That is absolutely essential. And it is happening right now. Now, I also want to talk about the, your financial guardrails here, because I appreciate that your government has kept your economic guardrails. But there is no path to balance. You heard the criticism. You've heard it before. There were no cuts made to reduce the $40 billion deficit that was posted today or, 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 or predicted past one and then going forward for the next fiscal year. Does a balanced budget matter to you or your government at all? I'll tell you what matters to me. What matters to me is a fiscally responsible budget. What matters to me is maintaining Canada's AAA credit rating, which is the basis for the ratings of all provinces, which is the basis for the ratings of businesses in our banking sector. What matters to me is maintaining a fiscally responsible budget and hitting and you know sticking within our guardrails because the Bank of Canada has been clear that those guardrails are helpful to the Bank of Canada. And so I know by sticking within them, which I have done, I help to create the conditions that make it possible for the Bank of Canada to lower rates. And we've seen some, we've had some good news on that front just today. Today, we had the March inflation numbers, 2.9%. February was 2.8. January was 2.9. I would contrast 2.9 in March with 3.5 in the United States, which, by the way, is running a far more expansive fiscal policy. For the past three months in a row, inflation has been within the Bank of Canada's target range. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's very important for me to run a fiscally responsible policy. 
I am doing that. And the final thing I would say to you, Michael, is, you know, there are some issues on which reasonable people can have different points of view. It's a matter of opinion of ideology. You know, you can argue whether gun control is good or bad. You can argue whether a woman's right to choose is good or bad. But the simple fact is Canada has the most responsible fiscal approach of any G7 country. We have the lowest debt to GDP ratio and it's coming down. We have the lowest deficit to GDP and that is coming down too. We have a AAA credit rating. It is not, you know, I'll tell you what, the people who work in ratings agencies, these guys are not liberal partisans, (laughs) these guys and gals. They look at the numbers. We have hit our targets. And it's the reason I'm really emphasizing this point is I know that Canadians are anxious. They're anxious about a lot of things. One thing that was very important to me that we worked hard to deliver was to meet our three fiscal marks. We've actually overachieved those. That means we're fiscally responsible. People can have the confidence that brings. And that does mean our approach is fiscally sustainable. A falling debt to GDP ratio Mm -hmm. is the definition of fiscal responsibility. It means you can keep going and actually your debt keeps on going down. It's like paying down I'm going to jump in and I'm sorry because I'm quickly running out of time with you. But I do want to raise the fact that as you heard, the the NDP leader, he's reserving whether or not to support the budget because he has concerns. Among them, the fact that when you look at the disability benefit, it it only amounts to about $200 a month uh, for people who who need that money to, to, to live. How much room is there to respond to Mr. Singh's concerns? Uh, We had a lot of very good and very detailed conversations with many people, including the NDP, ahead of the budget. Um, This is a budget which meets the moment. This is a budget which invests aggressively in housing, which Canadians need, which supports Canadians with affordability, which invests in the economic capacity of Canada which does it in a way that supports young Canadians and is fiscally responsible. It's a budget the NDP should support. It's actually a budget that everyone in Parliament should support. Minister Freeland, I appreciate the time this evening. Thank you for that. Thanks a lot. Have a good night.